Um, so what I want you to do is just, you know, just visually scan um, these sketches, um, compare the sketches as I'm telling you the, the story of how um, these came about. Um, these are from uh, a case, uh, in actually nine different cases in California, um, where these are sexual assault cases. So these are all from uh, rape victims. And um, it was a big practice in this police department to do sketches and composites. In fact, there were a few other victims um, who said that they just didn't get a good enough look in order to be able to do the sketch. So these are victims who had a good enough look to be able to do a sketch. Um, fast forward uh, a number of years, so you can see that these are mostly 2000, 2002, um, and DNA testing was done on all of these rape kits. And guess what? It's the same guy. So, let's see, he wore a hat or covered his hair in some way each and every time. But as you can see, there are, if you look at the dates, teardrop tattoos that are on and off, one side or the other, change in number, just as one example. But the individual looks to be of different racial and ethnic backgrounds from, you know, if you were to pick, you know, kind of two uh, sketches. And so the, the real question here is, and look at the age, I mean, the top to the right, I mean, the age looks 20 years different. So the question has to remain, if the eyewitness creates one of these and then has this, sometimes witnesses are given a copy to take home with them. The issue about contamination of the witness's memory is, is their memory of the perpetrator what he actually looked like? Or is it now closer to what the sketch is that they created? So it's not really a surprise if someone sees a sketch, right, says, oh, I, I think I know who that is, and then the witness picks a person who happens to look very similar to the sketch. Right? We shouldn't be surprised um, that that ultimately happens. 